Hi guys, Phil aka Maya Guy, back with another Maya tutorial on Bifrost Graph. So, leaving, um, starting off from where we left off in um, Bifrost Graph nodes simplified part one, we can see that we've got our cube here and we uh, used an input. So, we took all of the values from here, um, the x, y, and z values, and we put them into an input and we could move them around with inside Maya, like so. However, being a guy that I am, I want to complicate things and I don't just want a cube, I want more than a cube. So I want a sphere, let's scale that down a bit and move it over here. And I want a cylinder, let's scale that down, I'm going to move that over there. So, do you know what, I want a torus as well. And I want that above the cube. So we've got a few objects there. Um, but obviously uh, Bifrost Graph can't see those objects yet so we're just going to drag them in so we're going to get the sphere in we're going to get the cylinder in and we're going to get the torus in so now we've got our objects and let's just open up Bifrost into a bit of a bigger window so we can see that we've got um, these points only allow for one input so we can only put one object in at a time. What we don't want to do is replicate this another three times and plug them all into the output. Um, there are some reasons why we might want to do that, but we'll look into that another time. But at the moment, we just want to move all these objects at once. Um, so how would we plug all of these into here? See, if I plug that into there, it only takes one input. So that's no good for us. Well, that's where um, something called an array comes in handy so if we'll just hit the tab key and we'll type in array and we want to build an array so what is an array an array and in the simplest terms <clears throat> very simple it's a box or a node that can hold lots of information from multiple sources all right so I can drag in this sim down to an array and We'll get a new port here, so I'll drag my next object into one below. I'll drag this object into there as well. I'm going to undo this, uh, I'm going to undo this, and I'm going to drag that into there as well. So now we've got all of the information from all of these objects, and what I'll just quickly do is show you the type of information that's going into this array. So if we right click on here, we can add something called a watch point. Now a watch point is basically um, going to allow us to see the data that's coming from here. Um, let's just remove that and add it again. It's not showing up for some reason. Hide info, show info, remove watch point. Ah, maybe because it's not plugged in. So let's just unplug that, plug the array in down here, and now we'll add a watch point. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, you can grab this little eyeball and drag it up and down here, which is cool of its uh, of itself really. That's just awesome. So we'll just move these out of the way and we'll have a look at this watch point. And the watch point is just telling us what's coming from here. Okay, so we can see we've got components, offsets, vertex, components, normals, UV information, and right down here we've got point position, which we know we've been getting from a previous tutorial. So uh, we can see we've got point position information in there times four objects. These are, all these objects have got the same properties um, that we can see in this watch point. So I'll just remove that watch point. So we've got an array. We've got all of that information there and it's stored in each of these slots and all of that information can be taken out of here. So in essence, we can bring up our point position and we can say, okay, can you take the point position of all of those objects and put it into there? Then we can set our out geometry. I'm just going to stick it into a new port. Delete those ports, like so. Now we've got a geometry a geometry slot here, and that will only accept one um, one object. So we'll just drag the uh, another um, pick whip from the build array into that geometry there. So now, if I go back into Maya, we should see all of our objects. So I'll just put all the original ones 
into this same display layer as our cube. Um, they're hidden, so these are the Bifrost objects. And now I can go back to the Bifrost graph and I can scrub as I did with the cube. Um, that's because we haven't touched any of this. The input is still there. And if I add a watch point here, we can see that that is the information going into the input. We've got translate X, Y, and Z. We can also see the um, amount that that has been moved with a Maya, which is pretty amazing. So watch points are really cool um, if you want to have a look at what's going on. So you can remove that. We can even uh, stick a watch point on this array coming out of here, and it should just give us a number of objects. Size 4. So the size of this array is four objects. And that is arrays. Um, they're not as scary as you thought. Um, when anyone used to say to me, oh, I need to build an array and get the data out of that, my mind would blow and I'd run and hide in a corner. Um, but because we're using Bifrost and we can visualize um, this programming language uh, through nodes, it all becomes a lot more simple to understand. So that is um, just a quick look at arrays um, and how we can plug in multiple um, objects and data into them and feed them out. That's it guys, um, I will see you on the next one. Cheers.